th uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to talk with the school from uh, SEK from Guatemala and uh, Del Valley. And we're talking today about Armenian history and our Armenian history class that we're taking from the ABGU, AGBU, excuse me, ABC class. And we're in the first early uh, history class. And we have a marvelous teacher, uh, Anna from um, uh, Yerevan. And uh, they have a really, really interesting uh, format out. And so I was talking to her the other day and uh, thinking about doing some supplemental things. So we're going to try to meet uh, once a week or so with the, the kids from um, the other schools and share with some of the stuff that we're, that we're creating. The first thing we did was uh, we tried to put together some uh, different aspects of Armenian history that that are covered, but not necessarily covered in the same way. So the kids could kind of get a better understanding. And I put this in a PowerPoint so you could share. So I think that would actually work out really well. Uh, as we go along, we've made quizlets out of, uh, for the final exams for each of the courses. So uh, you, you have a quizlet that you can, that you can go through and try to get the kids to uh, actually uh, work at. So I think that's kind of neat too. We'll try to have a Quizlet up for this one, but I just don't have it yet. Now let me try to get my um, gotta try to pull it up real quick. Okay, now we're ready to go now. Slide show, where's it at? I don't know why it's not showing up. Okay, try it this way, so it looks over. There we go, yeah, here it works. Okay, this is Armenian history, the early years, and we have one for Armenian history, the middle years, and we have Armenian history with the genocide and stuff. So we'll, we'll have three of these different ones. And it, it's pretty comprehensive and it, and it works, I, I think, very beautifully. And the first one we're going to look at is the Armenian leader timeline. And if you uh, go ahead and uh, click on that link, this will go back from the, uh, from the earliest kingdoms to the uh, the end of the first less, the end of the first um, clash is right around here, around 50 BC. But you'd have these are the kings of, of different ones in, in Armenia, so you could keep them straight. Because a lot of times with Armenian names and Armenian geography and stuff like this, the names are different, so people don't have it straight. So this actually keeps it straight. And then it goes in and talks about the uh, people who are, were uh, kings all the way up until the um, uh, different dynasties. And this is the last dynasty. Now, the thing that's really fascinating from here is that Armenia today is around 30,000 square kilometers. Uh, at one time under Tigran the Great, it was uh, several hundred thousand kilometers, and it included most of Anatolia. And in, in what we think of Turkey today was basically, uh, you go from Cappadocia east, it was all Armenian area. And uh, so when you think about it, that's, that's very fascinating, I think. And then you have the different dynasties here. And when we get to the Middle Kingdoms, it becomes really fascinating. I told your teacher before 
and like, and I don't know if the kids know this or not, but I'm, uh, my relatives are pretty much almost everybody on this on this thing here. So it's uh, kind of nice for me to uh, go back and look. Uh, some of these different dynasties, and it, the, the Armenian country fell when the, when this dynasty falls. Armenia goes to uh, southeastern part of Turkey, and then they reestablish themselves, and that's this kingdom. And then they, before that, they had another kingdom before they become a client state between Rome and, and uh, that. So Armenia has a, a, offer a lot of opportunities of going up and down, so it's kind of neat. Let's go to the second slide. And the second slide, uh, now if you're fascinated with Armenian history, that's one thing, but to go. This is the beginnings of Armenia. And Armenia, uh, if, you, if you saw a, a planet documentary about Armenia, you'll know that Mount Ararat is, uh, is the spiritual home of uh, most Armenians. And this is where uh, Noah's Ark is supposed to have uh, landed. And uh, Noah and his sons you know, stepped out there. And then uh, they believe that their descendants, the Hike, are descendants of people that came from that. So we go to this part, and you can see that the folklore is right there. And then you have the legends going down, and it talks all about the historical characters and how they're related and all this kind of stuff here. It's not too much in the test, but it's really kind of neat to understand the beginnings of, um, of uh, Armenian history to, to do that, okay? That was Armenian folklore. The next one, this is the early history of Arwatu. Uh, these are the people that are about the same area during the early Iron Age. So we're gonna find out this is actually in, you should have seen this in your lessons. It's a pretty good idea to keep it straight. Thank you. Kingdom of Van, this is located by Lake Van. Some of my kids are exchanging, so remember to keep it on or put it back as soon as you can, okay? We'll see you in the next class when y'all come back. Okay, during its peak years, it, it, it shows, explains, got pictures. Uh, basically, it, it talks a little bit about the origin and the plateau. And they develop at a fairly high level, as you can tell here. Yeah, yeah. What did you need? Okay, sorry. Get a little interruption. Too. Okay, let's go to the next uh, slide ahead. Okay, now this is uh, Alexander the Great and uh, Sukhulids, who are, are actually one of his commanding officers, end up taking over. And if you remember that uh, one of the, the big things, he dies in 323 BC and he had conquered most of the known world, but his uh, commanders end up taking over. The Ptolemies take over Egypt, the Sukhulids take over the Levant and uh, go all the way into Armenia, all the way to the, uh, uh, the, the Hindu Kush area. And uh, Greek influence is really big. And Bactra is an is a Eastern empire that, and he married a woman named Roxanne, and they had a child. Uh, so it was, a, it was important for him. Now, here's Alexander the Great and his successors. It talks a little bit about that in Greek culture. Uh, if you notice, uh, Greek culture was actually pretty strong in Armenia beforehand. And uh, you're going to see that around 200 and something, the Cyclid Empire starts uh, falling apart. 200 BC, and with them falling apart is when uh, this ends up going in uh, into that, okay? So you can read that at your leisure. I think that'd be actually pretty helpful. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, now this is the, these are the kings that break away from the Cyclid uh, Empire. These are the first uh, Armenian kings, Ardash, is the uh, artist the conqueror. Okay, we have some um, information about him in that class, but it, it helps out a little bit more, gives you a little bit more deal here. And you got Ar Ardish, uh the first, uh, founded the Parthian Empire Kingdom, you see in 
240 BC, and his successor won over uh, Sucullus II, consolidated his rule, and uh, this is where you start getting a free Armenia. So Armenia was being away from the Sucullid Empire. The Sucullid Empire was crumbling. And then shortly, about 60, 70 years later, that's when the Maccabees revolt against the Sucullids and uh, they take over Jerusalem. And, and you may have heard some of that if you, if you uh, look in your Bible story. So you can see that uh, kind of interesting information, I, I think. Put it all together, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, next one is a history of this dynasty. And uh, it goes to this and it talks uh, again about the uh, same gentleman. It talks a little bit more about his dynasty and it talks about the city. This will actually be on a couple of your tests. So it should look out pretty interesting. And then it talks about what's happening with the Sucolids and uh, how they're kind of left alone for a while. And then at this point, we start having uh, Armenianization. And uh, this is really important. Remember, Armenia is located in a central trade area where the, uh, some of the silk roads go through. And many Armenians were craftsmen and traders, uh, very good in silver, very good in gold, uh, very, uh, very high craftsmen also with uh, uh, carpets and, and weaving and stuff like this. So they, they became uh, very highly successful uh, traders and uh, has some really, really good fighters as well. We're gonna talk about the fighters here in a second. Okay, that kind of explains a little bit about that. So let's go to the next one. Okay, next one is Tigran the Great. Uh, he was a uh, king for uh, almost 50 years. And Tigran uh, is, is a very interesting man. Uh, Okay, it talks about uh, this actually here is, if you take a look, this is, is the Armenian Empire. And uh, you can see that all these little places. Now, the reason why he doesn't take over Pontos has to do with he's related to the king here in this area. And then when the king goes up against Rome and starts losing, that's where it ends up happening here. But this is all the major height. Uh, this is the area. Remember, Yerevan is not the capital at this time. It's Artashak. And then it goes all the way here to uh, uh, this is this is uh, where the uh, last kingdom is developed right here, and these are different client states. and And it's really crazy if you have Armenian relatives, or which a lot of my uh, family came from. I have relatives from each one of these little places, so it's uh, they intermarried uh, extremely a lot. And you'll notice that little Armenia or lesser Armenia goes all the way from the Black Sea over to this part here too. So this is, uh, here's Cappadocia. And Cappadocia is probably the most beautiful city in the world. It was carved in the side of the mountains. And if you ever uh, Google Cappadocia, you'll see the hot air balloons go all around. And you can take, uh, this sec we got. Yeah, they, they're going to be announcements, but I'm going to try to talk over them. I, I noticed down here, here's Jerusalem and Judea, the Mediterranean Sea. You have Damascus and all the Phoenician cities rather up here. And then here is Antioch. Uh, Antioch was a, a, a very old um, a city that was the third largest city in the Roman Empire. So this becomes a big uh, metropolitan area. Uh, 
at that point. So this was under Tigran, which is really a very strong area. So that gives you kind of an interesting part about him. Okay, go to the next one. Okay, this is the last one. And, and he, these are kind of neat things. Armenian army was very sought after, uh, even though Armenia, the country itself, they fought on several different uh, areas. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the heavy cavalry. And these are the, about the best thing ne next to tanks. And unlike the light cavalry from the West, these, these horses uh, had metal um, coverings and it was very difficult to get through this metal mesh, okay? And then they had spears or they had a, um, a club to knock people off of. Now remember, if you could knock off the person from the, from the horse, you pretty much could do damage. So these people would run through the cavalry. Uh, the spears would be caught in the mesh and, and, and break, and then they would be clubbed off the horse and then normally be trampled to death. So what's really kind of a crazy deal during the, uh, it'll talk about many times they were uh, good enough just to go ahead and just decimate uh, light cavalry. So light cavalry could not really keep up with that. And many of the heavy cavalry that you hear about, uh, they were noble families. So they, they, all this was not paid for by the government, but it was paid for by the family. So it was actually kind of neat. Okay. And then the next one we're going to is about the Roman legions and in, in, uh, the uh, Armenian legions and the Roman army. Okay. So in this area here, Rome was used, uh, used uh, Armenian soldiers all over the place in the army, which is actually kind of neat. So if you ever check, you may would actually see that you had a tremendous amount of uh, people that would actually go. And it goes through and it, uh, so the first legion, the second legion, and talks a little bit about recruitment. Now, one of the big problems that you'll notice as Roman Empire goes, not necessarily when you go to, uh, at Rome, after probably, start when, you, when Roman goes, when Rome takes over so much that they end up having to depend on so many other places, uh, you end up with a real problem because you don't, you're training people who are eventually going to uh, fight you. And in the case of the Armenians, uh, they were stuck between two people for a long time. So they developed some good tactics and uh, later on they used the tactics that they had. The, um, the Goths and the Vistagoths and stuff will come over here. They come from the Ukraine area, they come down and they settle in this area. And eventually they went to sack Rome in the early 400s. And then, the, uh, then they end up moving over to uh, 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 this area and then the Vandals and the Vandals come around over to Carthage and sneak up. And then uh, that's where you get the word vandalized in the uh, English language when they, they burn Rome and sack it in the middle of four, uh, 400. So Rome was attacked several times by the people who were actually trying to help them out. So you can never tell about that. So what I try to do today was I, I try to give together some stuff that would actually really help you out, prepare you for some tests and to, to put some clarity into maybe some of these things that may seem a little disjointed, only simply because uh, not that it was presented wrong, but it just it was presented in such a manner. I have this up for us in your um, in, on your dashboard. And I shared it with uh, Nadia so she can share it with you. And we'll have it probably for every class. Uh, next, uh, the next time we take the next class, we have they, and each class goes for a certain age. So uh, we'll have it to uh, so you can understand exactly um, what's going on at all times. Okay. And are there any questions over any of this stuff? We'll try to let some of the kids talk to kids or Nadia. Maybe you can get Danielle or somebody to talk to them about how, how they're liking their, their class so far.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, go ahead, Daniela. Can you tell them? How do you like the how are you liking the, the Armenian project? Well, it's working really interesting. I really enjoy it. I mean, it gives all the information and the tests after each, like each lesson. And I think it's really like really helpful that you can like both listen and read the text. And I like that you can do like at your own pace and don't have to be like with due dates and all that because that kind of stresses me out. <laughs> so I, I think it's kind of helpful. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Does anybody else want to share? Let's see who's here. Hmm. Sebas, do you want to share how you feel about um, taking the Armenian course? Sebas? So I felt uh, funny that the Armenian course is so inter interesting and that's it. Okay, yes, they're finding it interesting. It's a it's a different different way that they're learning because they hadn't they hadn't used they hadn't done a course like that, but we're all doing it together. So thank you for for your explanation today. Guys, do you have any questions? Because they have to start writing, their, they have to start um, working on their project. Guys, questions, questions here? Are you sure? Okay, then it, I guess it's all clear. These kids are prepared to present about Guatemala as well. Hello? Can you guys hear us? Now let me let me restart everything. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Mr. Cunningham, can you repeat yeah. what you said? What? Can you repeat what we were supposed to do? Say that again. Okay, yeah. What we're trying to do is we're trying to talk to, um, yeah, we're trying to talk to the people from Guatemala, but I think they got knocked off. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just continue on with uh, our deal. I have. Sarah, I have your passwords. I'm going to send out the passwords in just a second. And what they were trying to explain is that you can go ahead and do this on your own time, which would actually be better than trying to do it as a group. Because I, I, when everybody is trying to listen at the same time, uh, it doesn't really work out. But you could take this 40 minutes and do it on your own during that time, which would just bring in your earphones and it would actually make some sense. Okay, now. 
uh, let me try to find the uh, email right quick and I give you the uh, um, Okay, here we go. I'll have it in just a second. Okay, how many of my people are having trouble getting in? Okay, Jacqueline, thank you. Okay, I don't have your still, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, you're going to have to register, and here's what you need to register. Okay, if you're not registered, make sure you register this way, and I'll have it right now to you. Okay, now. If you do not, if you do not uh, have, if you do not have, uh, if you haven't registered, make sure you register this link, and make sure you sign up for the hybrid class, uh, A H two 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 Ancient Armenian History Part One. Okay, and then it should work for you. Now, if you're getting through that captive deal and and we have that problem, make sure you do it on your cell phone. But that's that's the thing that they said that should work for sure. So if you if I don't have you down here, uh, and I have here's what I have. I have brand brands of uh, Jorge's, Julissa's, Crystal's, Rakaya's, Sarah. I have her link. Okay, I don't and I have Mario's and I have Samantha's. I think Samantha's really sick. Uh, Garrett, Priscilla's, I have hers, I have Katie's, I have uh, Sophia A's, I have Natalie and Natalia's, and I have Sonata's um, for, uh, passwords here. So if you're any one of those, you don't have your passwords, I have your, I have your passwords right here. I'm going to stop the recording since we're off. And okay, now it's going to be really important. Oh, there you go. How are you doing? There we are. Sorry, sorry, we lost connection there. We had some problems, but yeah. you can hear us now, right? Yeah, yeah.
okay, yeah, we'll be fine. Uh, I don't know if the kids want to talk to each other. We're, we're having a lot of problems with our end. We're, we're, the kids can't get on because our, our school blocks some of these things and then that. So we're, we're trying to make sure everybody gets on. Uh, did you have any problems with that or no? Hey, I guess, I guess, yeah, we're having some problems, but not, I don't think it's because of the school. I think it's just the internet. It's been very windy here, so. Okay. And the rain affects that. So oh, yeah, wow. guys, if you want to talk, if you want to talk to each other, yeah, that yeah, would yeah. be great. Yeah. Uh, if somebody could go ahead and unmute, you could talk, I can't, that would work on. Okay, we were working, well, yesterday we started working on the great things about Guatemala, so they're going to be ready in the next, uh, in the next, in our afternoon class. Yeah, good, good. To share, I don't know if it's your same students, because maybe they could share some of those things. Yeah, we were going, we actually were doing that, and uh, we kind of pulled off the, because we're trying to get this stuff here. Well, we thought, well, the kids have some makings and stuff, we'd be glad to. Uh, we, we figured out that uh, Guatemala has a lot more tourist uh, information than we ever thought of. I mean, literally speaking, uh, the kids were really excited about it. In fact, uh, Shania, uh, Shania, uh, unmute yourself if you can and, and tell uh, the teacher and the students down there how you would like to, she wrote up a deal why that's where she wants to go uh, to visit is Guatemala. Oh, that's cool. Shania, can you can you unmute to uh, share, please? See, our, our trouble is all our kids now are in all different parts of the school and in other classes. So that sometimes the teacher won't let them unmute. That's a problem. Oh no! Yeah, it's uh, kind of like that. Yeah, uh, Shania, go ahead. Tell, talk about it. They like to hear. She said that she wrote something two years ago for a school project that they asked where they could go in any place in the world. And she, she picked Guatemala. Oh, really? What did she find out? But that's what I'm trying to say. Tonight, they want to know. Uh, for vacation, she, they gave her a budget. And she picked Guatemala because it was the best, is the best uh, uh, value for their money. I, where did you where did you decide to go to? Oh, that. Or maybe Javier, can you? I think is Javier here. Can you tell them what places uh, they could go to if they come to Guatemala, Javier? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite place here? Yeah, my favorite place here is uh, Lago Atitlan. That's about it's it. a very beautiful lake we have here. Mm -hmm. I, okay, tell him about it. Tell him yeah. about it. I don't know what to tell him. Uh, what do you like about it? How far is it from the city? What do you do there? Like three hours uh, from this from the city to there. And I like it because sometimes when I go like in trips with my family, we go to our house that we have there. Uh, that's it. Okay. How about- We like to, to go on, on our boat and go like visit pueblitos, villages. Yeah, little villages. These. Villages are all around a lake, which is actually uh, the crater of the volcano that got that's filled with water. And it's very interesting because on the bottom of that of the of the lake, eh, they found some ancient Maya eh, city. Oh wow! So and uh, around around the lake, there are I think 12, 12 different towns. And um, it's amazing. They can, yeah, they can take a boat and ride to the different towns and they're all very special, very, very special towns. I, I've always been enamored or wondered about Tikal. Uh, what's it like? Have you been? Who has been to Tikal? No. They will tell them. About? Oh, you don't remember? 
Okay, Tikal is very far away from here. It's like a 13 hour drive. We do have planes that, tell, that take you to Tikal, but people rarely take them here. Um, so it's not that easy to get there, but it's it's beautiful. It's very, very, very beautiful. Who else has gone to Tikal? Diego, have you gone to Tikal? Yes. Hold on, I think Diego Chavez. Me? Yes, hey, have yes I have went to Tikal. Okay, can you tell them what's it like? Um, there, there is a lot of ruins from the Mayas and you can learn a lot about history. Uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of trees and it's kind of like, uh, uh um, everything there is kind of historic. The trees that the oh, yeah. mentioned are very, very, very old, maybe over a hundred years old right there. Ago. And uh, Diego, are you able to see like animals, exotic animals there? Yeah, you can see a lot of like monkeys and animals like that in the forest. Wow. Yeah, yeah. when I went, we only saw monkeys. We were, everybody wants to see um, different types of, of animals there because we have really nice exotic animals. And I forgot the name of the animal. The feline from there, guys. The jaguar. Jaguar, the jaguar. Yeah. Everybody expects to see a jaguar, and only if you get lucky, you get to see it. Yeah, you don't want to see it too close. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, what percentage of people in Guatemala will have uh, the uh, the sense from Maya? Um, we have that in our presentation. I think it would be over sixty percent. Oh wow! And yeah. how hard is it? Uh, how hard is it to speak uh, Maya? Oh, I think it's it's very hard. There's been a there's been an effort um, to teach Maya languages in in schools, but the problem is that there are over twenty Maya languages, so it's wow it's very difficult. First, which language are you going to learn? And then, if you learn the language at the end, there are languages that are Maya languages that are spoken only by twenty five people. And um, getting teachers that know about teaching, that know the language, that come to the schools has been a has been a, uh, an issue for that. So, for example, in our school, we go for English, we go for French, and the ministry lets us give um, Mayan culture instead of the language. Oh wow! Yeah, so okay. we we learn about uh, the Mayan. for the for the for the people that may not understand. For a lot of our kids that don't get much information on the Maya, um, by the time the Spanish conquest, the Maya were subjugated to the Aztecs by that time, correct? They had passed I'm, their they had passed their uh, classical period by the time they the had already fought me, uh, among each other. Like what? Yeah, when the Spaniards came, they were they they were already declining. They were oh. already yeah. So what, what era would it be that uh, where the Maya were the strongest? What time period? The time period? Uh-huh. Hold on. That the Mayans were what? what? What the Mayans were strongest in what time period? You know, if if so, just give them an idea of history. Okay, I'll, I'll check the, the years. It's um during the classic period, that was their 250 AD to 900. Okay. Okay, and then they started declining and it was, well, the, we have different theories, right? But um, they started fighting against each other, different groups. They, the Aztecs had something to do with it. And uh, um, diseases, maybe we're thinking, uh, we think about viruses or famine. So we yeah, really but don't know here. I, I've always been fascinated, so I studied a little bit, but I learned like the Maya were the first people to have a twenty-three digit numbers, and and they and they had brain surgeries. They have a whole number system. This class, this grade, the students that are here, they have um, different Mayan workshops that they've that they've um, um, that they've prepared, and they have presented it to schools in the United States. So if you guys are interested, we can set up a meeting. Oh and yeah. Some about uh, Mayan numbers. Um, what were the other topics that you guys had? Probably Mayan calendar, but that'd be 2012 deal. 
We did Maya numbers and we did um, general Maya information. Wow. Now, where, where was the center for the largest population of Maya? Was it located where you guys are at? Was it located more northeast towards uh, the Yucatan or where, where was the, or did they shift? Okay. okay. They were. Yeah, I kind of think like Armenia, Armenia population kind of shifted. Didn't, if I'm not correct, if I'm correct, didn't the Maya population move too? I mean, the, the cities or whatever, or no? Yes, when, yes, when yes, you, they moved. When, we have, let me see if I can find a map that I can show you. Because uh, that, that would be kind of interesting to show because uh, then they could compare like your history with history for other countries and they're not the only country that's done this. That would be interesting. Let me see, I have a map here in my files. Let's see if I can find it right now. Because Armenia uh, falls apart in around a thousand with the Anna gets defeated and then they reestablish themselves later in mm -hmm. southeastern Turkey. So you go by another 200 years, they, they go another 200 years and, and then they're a large kingdom again in another part of the country. So it's kind of like the Maya moving. In, in, in kind of like the same, yes. It kind of, the same thing happened here. And that's when the Spaniards came. They were already, they had already spread all over the, all over the place. Let me, you know what? I'm going to search for my, for my maps in my drive. And I'm going to send them to you so that you can see them. Okay. And... Uh, and we can tell you all about that. And and one more quick question: Isn't that isn't it true that the Mayas had a very high civilization, but they 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 did slash and burn crops? I mean, they did they did agriculture at a fairly low level, or, or is, am I mistaken on that? Yes, they were really great agricultures, but at the end of the of the uh, of the harvest season. They did do something, it's called Las Rosas in Spanish. It's, they used to burn the fields and they believed that that would um, make the soil fertile again for the, for, for the next year, the plantations of next year. Oh, wow. So up to, a, I think up to a, uh, about 20 years ago, people still did that here. Wow. And, but now it's, it's forbidden because of, of okay. environmental issues. So what percentage of people would speak Spanish in Guatemala? today? Um, I think that it's our class right now. Oh, no, the kids from the next class are here trying to meet you. You're going to meet him later. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll let you go. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have to go. Um, okay. I'll see you then at, at three, at three something. Okay. Or... Okay. I think we have one. We have two meetings left, right? What time? We have, hold on, I have everything in my mail. We have, because we have the Afghanistan thing and then we have the Guatemala thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have, oh, we have a meeting right now at 9 10. That's the Afghanistan one. That's why the kids came from us, for me. Okay, I gotta try to pull that one up. So, um... Okay, and then at 12, at 2.30 our time. Okay, yeah, 3.30 our time, that would be great. Okay, let, okay. Me, try, let me try to see about the Afghan uh, deal. Okay, okay, We're, let me move from uh, to the other class and I'll, I'll log okay. in. Okay. 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 okay, everybody, uh, I guess we're gonna have to, uh, Julio, hey, Julio, you listening? You still on Julio? Let me...